So we have something in math called a and it just shows the relative sizes of at least two batters. For example, I could talk about the ratio of girls to boys in this room. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven girls. And just to make it one boy, I'll count myself as a boy. So then I would say seven, I'd say seven, and the colon means a ratio to one. Seven to one. And you'll see that on the ACT. That means there's seven girls, one boy, which means there are a total of eight people. Right? So if you convert that fraction, I see that a lot on the ACT. Then you go, okay, seven to one. And they say, what percentage is girls? You would say seven out of eight. Right? Seven out of seven plus one. So another example, say you have 60 women, 30 men. You could write that as a fraction, 60 to 30, which is two over one. Most times you see it written as a, as a, as a ratio like that, with the colon right there. Okay. Now, A over B is a ratio, C over D is a ratio, and as soon as we put an equal sign in, we call that a proportion. And you may remember from previous math class, the easiest way to solve a proportion is just to go A times D equals B times C. Cross multiply, I've heard, the butterfly method, I've heard. Um, or you can multiply both sides by B, multiply both sides by D, get the same result. So an example. I would, right here, do 60 times 5. And we're seniors, we could do some of this in our head. What's 60 times 5? 300. And then, what is 7, or I should say x, times 7? Seven? 7x, seven right? So solving for x, I would divide both sides by 7. So divide by 7, divide by 7. We get 300 over 7, which is around 42.9. I'm sure you remember from 8th grade. Another one. We could do 27 times 5. Hmm, what is 27 times 5? 135. See, 7 times 5 is 35. It's 10 plus the 3 would be 135. And then we have 10 times x. By the way, if it bothers you having the x on the right side, when you start this, you could just do this one first and then this one, and then it'll be flipped, and maybe that makes more sense to you. So when I take 135 divided by 10, dividing by 10 means move the decimal place over 1, so I know that x is 13.5. 135 divided by 10 is 13.5. Dividing by 10 just means move the decimal place over 1 to the left. Any questions so far? I'm going to take x and just write 20x. Now here's where it gets a little bit trickier, but not really that tricky. But you have x minus 10 times 30. That means you need to multiply the x by 30 and the negative 10 by 30. I'm sure you're used to seeing it written like this. Thirty and then x minus ten in parentheses, parentheses saying I gotta distribute 
the 30 to vote. Can you guys see the yellow okay back there? Yeah, okay. Distribute the 30. 30x. 30 times 10 is 300 with the minus. Multiplying by 10 just means add a zero. Bring down my 20. We're trying to get x by itself. I have 20x on this side of 30x over here. I'm going to subtract off 30x. And then 30 minus 20 is 10. Divide x, I'm sorry, divide negative 300 by 10, which would just mean drop a zero. So x equals negative 30. Any questions on that? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So if you take 20 minus 30, that's negative 10. And then when you take negative divided by negative, you get positive. <coughs> How do you check our... So we're... X is 30. So 30 minus 10 is 20. And 20 divided by 20 is 1. So I have 1 over here. And the 30 divided by 30 is also 1. So we have 1 equals 1. That's a true statement. So I know I'm correct. Had I plugged in negative 30, then I would have gotten two different ratios. And they wouldn't be the same. I know I messed up somewhere. Four, five, six, and seven are more so percent questions. So like what is 35% of 50? There's two ways to do this. One, when I see that, I just think, oh, that just means 0.35 times 50, right? Does that make sense? When you say what's 35% of 50? You may have also seen this, bless you, from AG1, and I'll put it at the very top. You may have seen your teacher write this, percent over 100 equals is over of. That's a common way teachers teach that. You guys remember that, seeing that ever? Percent over 100 equals is over of. So if I say 15%, then I would put the 15 here. Or 10 is, then I'd put the 10 here. Or 10 is um, 75 is 55% of. So in these percentages, there's an is, there's an of, and there's a percent. And that's always 100. Feel free to use this proportion if you want. Or if it makes more sense, just to logically do it in your head. I show them work at least. You can. So like this one, when I write down percent over 100, and it's always over 100 because percentages are out of 100, equals is over of, I start and it says what is. Well what is would be our variable, what we're trying to find out, right? So this would be our x. 35%. Well, that says percent. So that goes here. Of 50. Well, of 50 goes with the of. So our proportion we get is 35 out of 100 equals x over 50. You guys remember seeing that? So what is, we don't know, so we make that an x. 
percent always goes there. Of, five, of 50, the of goes there. Solving. I take 35 times 50. One thousand seven fifty. I take a hundred times X. Now I'm going to divide both sides by a hundred. So seventeen fifty divided by a hundred. Move the decimal place over two. One, two. X would be seventeen point five. You would get the same thing had you just done 0.35 times 50. Probably how I would do it. But if you get really confused with percentages, I recommend the, the proportion. Does that make sense? But if you do 0.35 times 50, you should get 17 and a half. Now, number five is the same. It's exactly the same. So, 22% what is of 90 and it's always over 100 so what is 22 percent of 90 of goes here is goes here percent goes there take 22 times 90 1980 100 times x. It's yellow, it's easier to see. 1980. Solving for x, divide by 100. 1980 divided by 100 means smooth the decimal place over 2. 1, 2, 19.8. Or 19.80. Same thing. Questions? This one, 75 is, so let me set up my proportion. Percent goes here, 100 goes here. Is goes here, of goes. So 75 is. Does the 75 go here, here, or here? On the top, left, or right? right. On the right. Because is always goes on the top right. So I can put 75. 55%. Where does the percent go? Here or here? Left or right? Left. And then it says, of what number? That would be my x. And x is, of goes here. Doing the math. I take 55 times x. 100 times 75, which means 675 and add two zeros. 7,500. And then I can't really do 7,500 divided by 55 in my head. I wish I could do that, but it's 136.4. If you take 7,500 divided by 55, you should get 136.4. Next, percent over 100 equals of, <laughs> 17 is, where does 17 go? Top left, top right, bottom right, huh? 
top right. And it says, what percentage? So that's my X, right? Percentage goes left or right? Left. And then of 89, when you're doing this, don't just say, oh, there's only one spot left, so let me just plug it there. It's a good idea to just double check. So of, was of in the bottom? Yes, 89. Do the math, 89x equals 17 times 100, which means 17 with two zeros. Divide by 89 on both sides, and you get around 19.1. You all remember this from grade? Yeah? It's, good, it's a good uh, refresher. You take the ACT, there's a lot of percents on the ACT. All right, so now that we reviewed, I would say the back page is more so new stuff. I bet you could have done it without me teaching it, but it's still what I would consider the new stuff. So we have KU and K-State. We have this really great team and not so great team. They played each other in basketball on February 10, 2014. KU shot 17 three-pointers. I don't know if you watch basketball or not, but when you shoot the ball, it's either three points or two points. Unless it's like a free throw, right? If you're really close, it's two points. If you're further away, it's three points, basically. And then there's a whole perimeter you have to stand behind to get three points. Now that was KU. K-State shot 15 three-pointers in the and when you're a basketball player, you get what's called a, uh, a shooting percentage. And that's just like how many of your shots actually go in the basket. And a three-pointer is usually not that high because it takes more skill. I think I usually see around like 20, 30, 40%. Yeah. So, what was KU's three-point shooting percentage. Hmm. So percentage. Well, we know that KU, which is right here, They made, they, they, they shot 17 times and made three of them, right? So as a fraction, I could say they made three out of 17. So they made three out of 17 shots. And I'm actually going to change this from how I did last year. I set this up as an is over of, but I think it makes more sense just to say, okay, they made three out of 17, right? And 3 out of 17 is what? So 3 divided by 17 is around 0.176. And then that's a decimal to change that to a percent. Multiply by 100, right? Or move the decimal place over 2. So I'd say 17.6%. They make 17.7% of their, uh, their three point shots. Does that make sense? Last year when I did this, I did 3 over 17 equals x over 100. But I mean, it's the same process. I think it makes more sense this way. Don't you agree? So KU's three-point shooting percentage was 17.6. K-State's
would be 8 out of 15, right? Let me 8 out of 15 shots, which is 53.3. I'm sorry, 0 0.533. Multiply by 100 to change it to a percentage. And that would be 53.3. So KU only made about, you know, every five shots, where K-State is making half their shots, approximately. KU still won, right? Always wins. No? Questions on that? I do want to show you last year, in case this way works better for you. To me, this looks more complicated, but I did 3 out of 17 equals what over 100, and then I solved. And then for this one, I did 8 out of 15 was what over 100, what percentage, and then I solved that way. But I'm, I think this way makes more sense. Jordan likes to play basketball. Last game, he made 9 out of 21 free throws. This is the exact same problem, right? So what was his free throw shooting percentage? He made 9 out of 21. And if you're lazy, you could just type 1 times 100 all at once. At least show me what you typed in your calculator. But 9 out of 21 is 0.4285. 0.4286. Move the decimal place over two, and you get 42.86%. So if I wrote this in a complete sentence, Jordan, who is now John, I don't know what happened there, you want his name to be John or Jordan? We'll call him JJ. JJ, see, Jordan John, um, has a free throw percentage of 42.86%. That's when you like get fouled. Right, and that's where you're standing there and you're doing free throws. Questions? Jordan's friend Mike, he makes 76% of his free throws. So, how many free throws would Mike make out of 25 shots? <clears throat> and again, you can set this up as a proportion. I think it makes more sense. He made 25 shots, right? Correct? It says he made 25 shots. And then the question is, how many of those did he make? Well, makes 76%. So all I need to do is take 25 times 0.76, and I did this last year, that was 19. So Mike would make 19 free throws. All that's saying is if he shoots the ball 25 times and he makes 76% of them, 76% of 25 is 19. So he would make 19 free throws. The way I did it last year, maybe this way works better for you. I said 76 out of 100 equals what over 25? And then I solved that way. I, I'm starting to think that's more confusing. Okay. Making a difference.
Now here I would strongly encourage you to set up a proportion whenever you're talking about like different years. So a $480,000 house, that's a big house, has a property tax of 